Welcome to PlayStation Corner. Here we're going to be covering everything PlayStation 5. So think reviews, news, previews, sales, deals, just all that good stuff. Now if you don't know me already, I run a channel by the name of Switch Corner. And this is the most recent expansion. So with that, hit subscribe, join the PlayStation arm of the family. And let's take a look at all 25 PlayStation 5 games available right now. So today we're breaking this down into four categories. We've got free games, physical games, digital games, and then free upgrades if you own a PS4 copy. First up, let's start with the free games. Free is good when you just dropped a serious chunk of change on a new console. And thankfully the PS5 has free available for download right now. First, we're getting Astro's Playroom. This one, it comes pre-installed on all PlayStation 5 consoles, and it's for the most part a simplistic 3D platformer that surprised me when it ended up getting decent scores in its reviews in the lead up to launch. I went from pre-launch not caring at all about this one to being excited by the time the console arrived. Having played it myself, now I gotta say, while it is still, you know, just essentially a glorified demo for the new DualSense, it's a lot more impressive than I expected. Wasn't excited for it but refuse they state they want to see more of this world they want to see it get a full release and i gotta say i'm joining them in that message i'd love to see them do something more with these characters Fortnite now and does this really need an introduction the king of the battle royale genre this playstation 5 version it's putting that extra power to good use and most importantly it's going to be outputting 4k and 60 frames per second at all times in all modes alongside this expect to see upgraded visuals and it's even taking advantage of the dual sense haptic feedback so i'll no doubt take a look but more for that haptic feedback than really anything else Finally then on the free side we've got Bug Snacks and I've not tried this yet but it's a timed free title that's available until January the 4th if you have a PlayStation Plus subscription and right now I'm going to guess that's probably most the user base. I'm not sure what to expect with this one, I'm reading pretty decent reviews, it seems we have a puzzle adventure experience that then, well, at least according to IGN, throws in some Pokemon elements to round things out. The only thing I know, the song in the trailer, catchy as hell, but it's also at this point driving me insane. Hopefully it's not just on loop in the game because that will force me to quickly uninstall it. So let's talk physical and we have a decent chunk to cover here starting with my favorite of them all demon souls it's a rebuild of the 2009 classic that just started a genre it started the souls like tagline it started pain and misery for anyone that dared face it i got my ps5 this was my first stop and they've done the name justice i can tell you that now incredibly close to the original while bringing it very much into the next gen. Story-wise, it's a tale of a land that's draped in fog, misery, and demons, and you'll be a lone warrior out to take down evil while earning that title of Slayer of Demons. If you do beat this game, you absolutely deserve it. Expect here though a whole lot of combat exploration, pain in the ass enemies, and a ton of secrets to uncover. If you've never played this before, but you like a challenge, it should absolutely be your first stop, and it really does show off the power of next gen. Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales now, and this is the cheapest physical launch title, and not really a true sequel as such, I'd say more of an expansion than anything. This was my second stop after the console arrived, and so far, I am impressed. The whole it's not a true sequel, I mean, who cares, they priced it right, and that don't matter when the first game was absolutely incredible, and probably one of the better examples of how to use a superhero license the right way. What they nailed in the first game was the freedom and the pace of it all in both the combat and then most importantly of course that web slinging around the open world. Hopefully now this second entry can capture some of that same magic. This one though it's been released as a ultimate edition as well and that's what I picked up myself. It packs together both Miles Morales and the original which has been remastered. Weirdly though this is the only way to grab that remaster for now so when you do go to pick this one up think about which one you want before you go ahead and commit. I was hoping for a free patch honestly I already owned the original game on my PS4 but yeah no luck so I'm willing to go ahead and spend that extra 20 to own it again. 
Next up then, Sackboy, A Big Adventure. This one's taking the cast of Little Big Planet, a series I loved back in the day, but it's now taking that cast and throwing them into a 3D multiplayer platformer. Here though, a evil foe by the name of Fex has kidnapped Sackboy's friends, and now you need to get out there and save them. I wasn't interested in this one, honestly, and somehow I ended up coming home with a copy from GameStop. That's because, and this might sound weird, but I read up on it, it's promising next-gen defining use of the Tempest 3D audio tech and those that watch Switch Corner will know I love my audio design in games so this should be a great way now to test out that new headset. Gonna be the last game to go in my console personally but no doubt it would be a good option for those that still remember the originals because it scares me to admit how old they are now or those that have younger family members in the household. Assassin's Creed Valhalla now one of the big launch titles for the PS5 no question and this takes the Assassin's Creed formula we all know by now and throws us into a Viking setting. I spent a decent chunk of time on this one and it's good. Problem for me, I can't help but think about the recent God of War and Ghost of Tsushima and they definitely outdo this. That said, like, it's a stunning looking game, it's been entertaining enough so far. The writing, the story, it's okay but a little weak at points for sure. And then there is of course an epic amount of content to keep you coming back for a long time. It's true what they said in reviews as well, it's got a slow start to the story with this one. But you know what? I had no issue, I was just enjoying my first window into next gen, so yeah, scenery here just kind of kept me busy. It's a good demo disc, that is for sure, to show off your new console. Godfall then, and this is by far the game I've spent the most time with outside of Demon's Souls, mainly because I feel somehow it's been given the least amount of coverage, so I was just curious to see if it was an absolute disaster. The embargo on Refuse dropped later than nearly every other game in the launch lineup, and by the time they did drop with mostly average Refuse, it was already too late for me, my copy was winging its way to my house. It's not bad, it's a hack and slash looter and you can't deny it's a hell of a demo of PS5 capabilities. Everything here is just covered in gold and every move comes in with more flash than Zeus himself could handle. That said, I am already feeling it's very repetitive, I'm already feeling the grind and I'm not sure it's going to have what it takes to hold my attention all the way to the end game. We will see though and I may drop some coverage on the channel with my opinions. Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition then and this one is a re-release, of course most of you will know that it was on the PS4, it's an absolutely fantastic game. Just not sure, for me I'm going to be down for paying to play it a second time. It is though promising a lot at least so it's not ripping you off for something that could have easily been a free patch. Here you can expect a new playable character Fergal, it includes a horde mode, has a turbo mode which actually increases the speed of the game to 1.2, it includes ray tracing and then it has a higher frame rate mode as well. I am holding out myself, I think there's a good shot come Black Friday, this might be one of the first discounts we ever see. Race fans, I wish I could say I've played it, but Dirt 5, my copy of this seems to be missing in action and I'm looking forward to checking it out. This is Codemasters, dropping the serious sim they're no doubt famous for by now, and settling into a more arcade-like experience. I'm absolutely down for that. That all said, if you could patch F1 2021, it would be absolutely amazing. I will happily pay full retail again, no problem. Here though expect to travel the world, from the US to Italy to China to Greece, all over in fact, track after track. The complaints right now seem to be career mode is a little on the weak side, but there is some fun challenges along the way where Codemasters flex their creativity. The bit I'm most excited for, a touted creation mode where it seems you can build out all sorts of crazy ideas and then throw them online for the unsuspecting world to face. Visually it's another one that looks like it's going to be stunning, but the colours if anything, that's what I'm really excited for. I want to see how it highlights the HDR the PlayStation 5 will be outputting. Sports fans then, your only option right now, NBA 2K21. First off, monster size game, the box is asking for 150 gig of free space on that new hard drive of yours. That mighty fine sounding one terabyte, it's not going to last long, that's for sure, if this is a sign of things to come. If you throw this one together with COD Cold War, you've nearly used half of your hard drive because that one terabyte is more like 650 gig with all the core files the PlayStation 5 needs. Sadly, if you own this already on PS4, you are shit out of luck as well. No free upgrade, no discount, kind of getting screwed, but I will add here 2K. They warned everybody, it's a complete rebuild of the game, 
and they let you know prior to release. So if you went ahead and grabbed that PS4 copy, you knew this was coming already. Not grabbing it myself, but it looks stunning visually and I could have guessed that because these NBA games, they always look pretty much incredible. So overcooked all you can eat, great game, share a kitchen, make up recipes and no doubt start arguments with your family and friends. This one, it has local co-op, it has online, it bundles together the first two games and all the DLC, it even has crossplay but it's not going to be getting my cash, just not the experience I'm looking for from my PlayStation, especially from the launch lineup, and I doubt very few will be coming here. Our penultimate game then, Planet Coaster, and the trailer always looked good. In fact, I'm a big fan of Frontier's work. They are the devs behind games like Roller Coaster Tycoon and Jurassic World Evolution. Seeing this though running on the Series X, and it is just another level. The trailer does not do it justice. Really didn't think it would be a demo of the power, but the visuals, the frame rate, it's all near perfect, especially the shadow work. It's well worth your consideration if you like the Park Builder vibe. Just know with this one, if you do have a PC or an Xbox, this is actually included in Game Pass if you want to save some cash and spend it elsewhere. Final physical game then, Call of Duty Cold War. Probably the biggest game of the launch. It's been a little while personally since I've played a card game, honestly. But I know one thing, visually they always look the part. And at launch, I'm a little bit more flexible, a little bit more willing to go into games that I just kind of want to see what next gen looks like. I'd go into this one though expecting a shortish campaign experience and a heavy focus on multiplayer, which is where I'm going to be spending most of my time. With this one though, what I'm actually most excited for is its use of the DualSense controller, specifically the adaptive triggers. Supposedly the triggers, they react to the type of weapon you are handling and the pushback they would naturally give. Opinions on this one so far though, they seem seriously impressed. I did check it out on Twitch as well and I gotta say, Zombies Endless Mode looks incredible. It's been a long time since I've been excited for a zombie mode, but just seeing it in action for a few minutes was enough to do it for me. All right, so let's talk day one patches, free patches to be specific. Here you have to obviously own the PS4 game to get the upgrade, but we have some good options here. Dead by Daylight, first of all, it gets a day one patch and a few friends of mine got me into this recently and it was never a good looking game. This here is a hell of an improvement. Dead by Daylight, my first impressions, it wasn't particularly scary. This upgrade though absolutely adds a little bit of terror to the experience. Think like heavy shadow work and just more intimidating environments and detail. This for me is a prime example of how you do a patch the right way and that power even rolls over into the frame rate. For those that don't know, this is a one versus four multiplayer experience. One killer chases down four other players who are basically repairing generators in the hopes of escaping. Great fun once you kind of get the rules down and once you get a group together. Here's one I did not expect, Manita got a day one patch. Here you take on the role of a shark and yeah, the clues in the name, you know, destroy everything and eat everyone in your way. Not a smart game, I think it's fair to say that, but it is for sure dumb fun. This upgrade is pushing the game to 4K60, it's adding ray tracing, and then it takes advantage of the new DualSense controller. If you don't own the game already, you can grab a PS5 physical, I'd be inclined personally though just to buy a pre-owned PS4 copy and download that patch, unless of course you want to hold on to that extra hard drive space, because I'm guessing, I mean I think it's safe to say there's going to be less download required for the PS5 disc version over the PS4 version. No Man's Sky then, a game that was an absolute disaster on launch, I was there day one, I regretted paying full price, but it has just continued to improve since then, but I think it's fair to say at this point it's grown itself a sizable community. This PlayStation 5 patch it's promising both smoother gameplay or then being graphically enhanced and even bringing a whole host of new features along for the ride. With this one it's probably a good option because you can pick up a PS4 copy of this for like 10 bucks or less. Borderlands free now and this is my favourite free next gen upgrade. I feel like the PS4 struggled with this one, at times it even chugged. This upgrade it's paying a focus to the performance, that's exactly what it needed. The visuals already look good but now we're adding in 4K60 four player split screen co-op. 
these are the sort of upgrades I'm most excited for. It's even then throwing in a few new cosmetics. I don't really care about them, but I'm sure there are folks out there who will. I never did finish it though, so now it is my chance and I've added it to my list of PlayStation 5 games to beat. The penultimate free upgrade now, WRC 9, and this has a PS5 release coming up in December. It was originally going to be a launch day release, but it seems it got pushed. Patch though, still dropped on day one, so if you can't wait or you want to, you know, save some cash, go the PS4 route like me. WRC is a series I've loved as it brings rally goodness to the table, and for the most part it is challenging as hell. It was a good game to begin with, but adding in this patch should do the game wonders, especially because it's going to be offering locked out 4K60. That frame rate should really make this one something special. Cannot wait, now I just need my PS4 copy to arrive in the mail, but I will be checking this out over the next few days, and I expect to put some content here on the channel. The final free upgrade then is the recently released least Watch Dogs Legion. I really enjoyed this game. I wasn't a fan of the first entry so much. I enjoyed the second, but I think the ability here to switch characters makes it my favourite so far. Keeps things fresh with different faces, animations, all that good stuff. Visually it was already stunning, but with this patch now it's a whole another level. Not downloaded it myself, I've actually seen it running on the Series X, but yeah, no other open world yet out there that can probably stand up to this dystopian take on London. Work against an agency though by the name of Albion and save your precious city. Promising then improved stability as well and it's going to be a great addition to your library if you are a fan of a more open world kind of experience. Alright, so digital only titles, and there's some good and there's for sure some weird. Let's get the weird two out of the way first. Gunya Fighter, don't think anyone cares. Wouldn't expect much from this outside of their trying to cash in on day one adopters. It's a party game brawler. It's actually not bad either, but it's nowhere near day one for me. Then King Oddball, another one that won't show off the power of your new shiny toy, but it is a little bit more interesting, I will admit. It's a 2D puzzle game, and yeah, check out a review if you want something. A little bit more, you know, unique to add to the library. It's also only five bucks, so it's not exactly going to be breaking the bank. Now let's talk the more interesting than these I like a lot. Observer System Redux, sadly with this one, if you own the original PS4 game, out of luck again, no free upgrade, but I adore this game. I've played it on both the PS4, I've played it on the Switch, and I'm going to be buying it again here. This one has no doubt benefited though from the delay of Cyberpunk as it channels that same Cyberpunk vibe, but it combines it with a horror twist. This one I expect to see truly what my PlayStation 5 is capable of. It's offering 60 frames per second, HDR, ray tracing, volumetric lighting, global illumination, and then new character models. They went for a definitive version and if they deliver in all of these areas I think it's pretty safe to say they delivered. Like Observer then Warhammer Chaos Bane is re-releasing in what they're calling the Slayer Edition. Sadly though if you own a PS4 copy like Observer you're going to be paying that entry fee again. I've never played this one so I will be checking it out. I do like my Warhammer I just managed to miss this one but it's a dungeon crawler with a Warhammer dressing so yeah like your dungeon crawlers, maybe luck here. This Slayer edition, it brings in all the DLC while upping the visual quality, and then it's gonna push that performance up to 4K60. Take out nearly all of the loading screens then, and it sounds like we have a quality of life update more than anything else. Hopefully it is though offering quite a bit more though, just to justify the fact they're gonna be asking you to pay again if you decide to revisit it. The final game for the video then, The Pathless, and this is digital only right now, but do know it's one of the very first limited print games of the generation, IM8Bit.com are getting an exclusive edition. There's a few weak reviews out there, but I wouldn't call them reputable sources. Most of the well-known ones, they're floating around that seven to eight out of 10 mark. From what I can tell though, this would be best compared to something like Journey, a stunning world for you to explore, but more about the world, more about the story than anything else. Promising though, fast movement and even rhythm game elements this one has for sure piqued my curiosity, but I think I'm going to wait personally on the physical release over the holidays from I Am 8-Bit. I have more than enough to play for the moment. And that is it, the first official video for PlayStation Corner is a wrap, and it was a bit of a long one actually. If you enjoyed the content though, consider hitting that subscribe button, join our new extension from Switch Corner. Over there, we're quickly approaching 20,000 subscribers. It'd be nice if we could get close to maybe like 100 here. If you have any questions though about today's list, do let me know in the comments down 
down below and let me know what you're going to be picking up. With that though, like, thank you again for being here at the very first video. The support means everything. And with that, I will see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone. Thank you.